Tom Bauer has voiced his criticism against Harry and Meghan at long last. In order to secure victory with the younger demographic, the palace should engage in a swift and effective response. Welcome back to our Princess Diana News YouTube channel, where we extend a heartfelt greeting to you. After enduring the relentless onslaught of Harry's lethal criticism, King Charles and Prince William have opted for the prudent and honorable choice of maintaining their silence. Remaining true to the principle of Buckingham Palace's steadfastness, their attendants persistently affirm that the most effective response to all the offensive disclosures and hostility is maintaining silence. These advisors suggest that the royal family can ensure their safety by maintaining a detached and morally superior position. The public will show support to those who abstain from engaging in negative tactics. This approach is based on the notion that the widespread disapproval of Harry's book in the British media is an accurate representation of the general sentiment across the UK. Furthermore, it can be inferred that the negative impact of Harry's betrayal on the nation's international standing is merely surface level. However, the renowned author on the subject of the British royal family, Mr. Tom Bauer strongly disagrees with the decisions being made by Charles William and his advisers, considering it a grave error. He claimed that Harry's actions have significantly harmed the royal family's image of virtue and uprightness. He further adds that if the silence continues, there is a danger of permanently alienating a significant portion of the population, particularly those under 30 who share empathy towards the Sussexes. Despite the unusual circumstances, William should deliver a well-crafted televised statement in order to regain control of the situation. However, he is confronted with a significant challenge during a period when social media endeavors to control the public's views and when a compelling story exists suggesting that Harry is being mistreated by an indifferent father, a hostile older brother, and a threatening stepmother. Incorporate the idea of Meghan's experience with racial discrimination within the royal family, which further complicates the task of upholding Britain's image in nations with predominantly black communities. Up until this point, the relentless Sussexes have accumulated a substantial fortune knowing that the royal family would continue to suffer in silence as their targets. It is time to break the silence. I concur with Mr. Please elaborate on this. I believe that after the conclusion of Harry's wine festival spectacle, it would be advisable for William to issue a poised and respectful statement. William should clarify that while he truly adores his younger brother and acknowledges the warm reception that Meghan received from both the British public and the royal family, he must emphasize that people's memories and perceptions can differ. It is crucial for him to address Meghan's unattainable aspirations of becoming a renowned star, a prominent global advocate, and utilizing the royal family solely as a launching pad. It seemed utterly unachievable. The primary objective of the royal family is to dedicate themselves to the betterment of both Britain and the Commonwealth. Throughout history, the only individual deserving recognition has always been the ruler. It is important for William to express his sadness regarding Harry's loss of faith in their family. He needs to address the fact that Harry is experiencing profound distress. Despite undergoing years of therapy, his mental issues appear to have become worse over time. Many individuals have astutely noted that his drug use, as openly acknowledged by himself, potentially exacerbated his challenges. It seems that both Meghan and her mother, Doria, were unfazed by Harry's drug addiction. Upon conducting research, it came to my attention that Harry has been regularly using cannabis in California, where it is permissible by law. Furthermore, it is concerning to note that Meghan allegedly distributed a substantial amount of cannabis to all 105 attendees at her initial wedding ceremony held in Jamaica in 2011. To date, Meghan has expressed her views on numerous social matters, yet the topic of marijuana use has been untouched. Despite its harmful nature, she has never expressed disapproval for it. Undoubtedly, when discussing Harry's erratic conduct, 
Williams' statement would not allude to the potential correlation between his actions and his reported experimentation with substances such as ketamine, cocaine, marijuana, and hashish, as acknowledged in his memoir. It would be wise for William to steer clear of any conversations regarding Meghan's potential as a committed and discreet member of the British royal family. By simply examining the attendees of Meghan and Harry's wedding, it becomes evident that Meghan possessed a profound desire for personal success. This is evident from the fact that she left out all her family members except her mother, Doria. Furthermore, she ensured that she extended invitations to Hollywood celebrities whom she had never even met. William is not only set to inherit the throne but is also likely to guide the monarchy through the latter half of the century. Therefore, it is crucial for him to actively question the credibility of Meghan and Harry, as it is already significantly flawed. In any other case, I have concerns regarding the royal family's ability to endure. If William takes prompt action and openly addresses the situation, he can swiftly restore his family's reputation along with the reputation of Britain. This action could significantly curtail Meghan and Harry's questionable strategies for financial gain. The entire outcome would be solely reliant on public perception. Could the royal family possibly consider reinstating Harry as a functional member? As a constitutional monarchy, the king's power is only derived from the consent of the public. Regardless of their seniority, all members of the royal family who are employed serve the crown. Furthermore, it is important for consent to be applicable to them too. As expected, individuals will naturally have a variety of responses. There will be individuals who vehemently advocate against forgiving him, while others will rejoice at the return of the prodigal son and the direction of that pendulum's movement is uncertain. If the majority of the public does not approve, there is no compelling reason for any member of the monarchy to engage in work. If the armed forces and charities do not wish to have Harry as their patron, then he is unfortunately in a difficult situation. Furthermore, the significance extends beyond just the views of the general public. The media, which Harry has often criticized, would closely document his journey of rehabilitation and reintegrating into the workforce. If they believe that the story about Hero Harry will generate higher sales, then it's evident they will quickly change their direction, leaving you surprised. However, there were rumors that Harry and Meghan were offered the keys to the Commonwealth, with suggestions of malicious acts and secret plots. I'm hesitant to offer him the same opportunity again, especially considering his portrayal of the Commonwealth as Empire II. Zero. Charles was not a guaranteed choice for the position of the head of the Commonwealth. Commonwealth heads of government had reached a consensus on this matter prior to the demise of the Queen. Additionally, the aforementioned principle should be applicable to any inclusion of Harry as well. When Harry was in his prime, embodying that delightful and mischievous persona admired by all, he captivated audiences with his entertaining and relatable nature, infusing his interactions with empathy and creating an effortlessly enjoyable atmosphere. Despite Harry having the best intentions and exceptional scripts, it is evident that he does not possess the necessary qualities for gravitas. It would be more beneficial for his father and his brother. In reality, Harry's mother Diana may not have possessed gravitas like others, but she undoubtedly garnered significant respect and admiration, which she rightfully earned. Harry truly shone bright, stealing the spotlight. He was the second most popular person, right after the late Queen. Instead of attempting to resemble his deceased mother, he opted for a slightly alternative path. In my opinion, the addition of a Joker would bring greater diversity to the royal family. Additionally, it might be beneficial if they attempt to establish a distinctive market for themselves. However, Meghan was never going to be the one for the role. Meghan's constant awareness prevented her from developing a sense of humor, and she influenced Harry in the same way. I believe that Harry's charm, reputation, and integrity have drastically declined. Furthermore, his prospects of being rehired by the company have completely vanished. A thoughtful royal admirer expressed their sentiment eloquently. I certainly hope not, that would not be ideal. As a country, 
it's difficult for me to confidently claim that we possess the most exemplary history globally, and certain aspects of it may generate feelings of embarrassment among British individuals. However, this troublesome individual has crossed the line, and while there may have been some understanding for their situation in the UK, public sentiment has transformed into a call for the monarch to revoke their nobility. The discovery of his newfound love initially brought great joy to the majority of people in this nation. However, due to numerous tales and deceit, the affection from the British populace is gradually diminishing. If his desire for Meghan is so strong, I can only hope that he will find happiness with her, as it seems like that may be the only form of affection he will receive. Due to our vivid recollection of the young, affectionate boy who trailed behind his mother's casket, we have extended numerous allowances to him. His tales of William's physical mistreatment are truly peculiar. Harry, an adult male, bravely battled in Afghanistan, for goodness sake. It is completely absurd to suggest that he needed therapy considering his ability to protect himself. If he lacked strength, he wouldn't have been accepted into the British army or deployed to a battlefield. And how do you feel about them? Kindly share your thoughts in the comments section regarding Harry's future, and we can engage in a discussion as well. If you find my video helpful, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and share it with others. Moreover, we politely request your subscription to the Princess Diana News Channel for further updates from our dedicated team. I appreciate your support and goodbye for now. Stay tuned for more videos from me in the future.